Welcome to the USA Hemp Museum. Uh, my name is Richard Davis and I'm, I'm curator of the Hemp Museum that I founded many years ago, about 20 years ago. We at the museum think global warming is the number one environmental problem in the earth today. Uh, if we don't do anything about this, indeed the ice caps may melt. Uh, there are all the kinds of serious scientific considerations that we are not going into in this book. This book is about a solution, and the solution, we feel, is to bring back hemp and in all its glory and grow it because hemp is the number one biomass crop in the world uh, that can be grown up around the world, unlike uh, some water-loving crops. This, this uh, plant holds more carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere than any other agricultural crop. In, in this book, we have quoted many people who are knowledgeable, knowledgeable about hemp and want hemp. Ron Paul is in here, Dennis Kucinich is in here, Nancy Pelosi is in here. These people are aware of the hemp as a solution and we want you to be aware of it because uh, we're coming to a place where we don't know what's happening in the scientific realm. We need to do something now. We need to get off of fossil fuels. We need to get the forests, uh, you know, to leave the forests in place and use hemp for paper and so on. So in this book, we have covered many aspects of, the, of using hemp as a, as a uh, solution. One of those solutions is make biofuels out of hemp. We've known about wood alcohol for centuries, and wood alcohol uh, it can be made from any wood source, and here hemp is a wood source. It grows more wood than, uh, over a four-year period than trees do, four times uh, as much over, over a period of time as trees make. So this is a source that we can replace uh, forests, and we need to do that just for global warming. You know, we we can wait ten more years, and it may be too late. We don't even know what's going on. We don't know what the currents in the oceans are doing or anything else. So, uh, while we seem to be aware that there's a problem, too many solutions are not realistic. Wind machines cut our use, but they don't reverse global warming as pulling it out by a plant does. We can use this plant for textiles, replace the cotton crop. The cotton crop is terribly polluting, I'm using most half the pesticides in the United States today on the cotton crop. And if we replace the cotton crop, which is uh, huge, it's half a million acres in California alone, growing this as on an emergency basis is what we're asking here. Realize we have a solution and we don't need to, this is the, biomass is the cheapest source also. So when we're talking about the economy, we have the cheapest source of energy in our biomass. It's cheaper than wind machines, it's cheaper than solar panels. This is the EPA talking, the EPA in 1989 Scientific American article said biomass is the cheapest form of energy. We use the light of the sun to grow green plants. So this is our first book in the series. And we're, right now we've, uh, we've got five books in the series lined up. ...to the world, and the world is coming to visit us. People from all over the world are interested in him. Japan, and Europe, so, thank you very much, and uh, we hope that this message will get through to Mr. Obama, President Obama, who we need to be on board in this call right now, because it's our economy that's going to benefit and make 50,000 products right here at home, and by America.